well uh, dear students uh, welcome to the 37th lecture of these this series on plant protection equipment machinery well uh, you know that uh, the crop has to be protected from uh, various elements for example from the weeds from insects pests and uh, other uh, um, harmful effects otherwise uh, the crop will not give us a good yield so what are the uh, what are the protection devices what are the protection uh, processes that we uh, we take up for any crop for that matter whether it is a cereal crop or a uh, plantation crop or a orchard crop whatever it is in fact uh, when we talk of this the protection is mainly from the insect pests here we had already discussed about uh, the weeds we had discussed about different types of uh, weeding devices and weeding equipment and different methods of controlling the weeds which are unwanted uh, plants in a in a particular crop but when you want to um, uh, protect them from other elements like diseases etc then insect pest uh, attack and then diseases are um, uh in in fact infested these plants are infested with the diseases and uh, ultimately it uh, leads to uh, damage of the plant and the plant dies and ultimately we don't get the yield so this particular section will be dealing more on the uh, chemical or the protection of the uh, uh, plant or the crop from uh, insects pests and uh, sometimes when we also want uh, that some of the Uh, growth hormones are to be applied then how do we apply them so th the equipment etc and the devices processes which are involved in these we will discuss under this section let us go through the various slides which i have prepared for you well what is plant protection as i said in fact uh, this has already been told what i was explaining here that uh, see a photograph has also been shown on on this side which talks of uh, in pomegranate uh, a particular device which have been developed at iit kharagpur we'll talk of this you know slightly later when this is the device which has been developed at iit kharagpur and then uh, tested at um, a location in maharashtra uh, well we are trying to as i said earlier that we are trying to we are trying to save the crop from the pest uh, attack uh, etc now the need see need to be applied on plants and soil in the form of spray sometimes when the chemical is there need to be applied we are talking of the plants sometimes uh, on the soil in fact uh, these are not for the soil but then uh, when we apply they will fall on to the plants as well as on the soil as well now what are the various methods by which we do and uh, the therefore the equipment for a uniform effective application is essential what we do is we want that it should be very effectively and uh, uh, correctly applied on to the targeted plants if the if it is only a growth organ uh, say uh, uh, item which has to be given to all the plants then there is no problem we can uniformly spread over it but then if it is only insect pest control so there may be a case where the cave, this is not infected at all over the place may be infected at certain localized locations so there we would have to apply and that's why it is very essential to go judiciously and uh, uniformly at the location where it is done and for this the sprayers and dusters are the ones devices or the equipment which are used we call them sprayers and dusters uh for for applying these chemicals when you dusters the name itself uh, tells you that dust means there are dust powders which need to be uh, spread now what are the mechanism what are the devices what mm, uh, we do for mm, the spraying of the chemical or the dusters we will talk of them later but this is what are the two important things one is the sprayer which is a equipment used for applying chemicals in the liquid droplet form and the duster is is the machine which is equipment for uh, powder form for application for in the powder form so these are these are the main things which we are talking with respect to plant protection and in this section as i said earlier we'll be only talking of uh, the plant protection of the plant from insect pests that's only so if we go to the next slide what do we get see dusters 
we talk of dusters first. Let uh, doesn't matter which order you follow, but let's talk of dusters. It's an equipment for applying chemicals which are in powder form. Yes. Uh, what do you do for these? Well, there are certain features for this because one is uh, you can very simple one is that you can take this and spread by hand. Uh, maybe that uh, if it is infected in your hand, possibly there may be a problem in your hand. That's why maybe we will have used gloves and then spread manually uh, in a small area if it is required. But when we are talking of large area, definitely we have to have a mechanism by which we should be able to apply. And uh, not only this, we should be able to apply uh, very uh, uniformly. We want that it should not be one plus more, the other plus less and all that. There should be a uniform application of this. So, and this that is why, so what is done? Well, the idea is the small particle say um, uh, number mean diameter about 1 to um, 10 micrometer may be um, uh, advantageous where complete coverage within the foliage is important. Yes, in fact then what we have to do this um, dust or uh, even the chemical. So, we talk of dust here. Now, the, the diameter of the particles which will be there, those powder particles uh, varying from 1 to 10 micrometer. So, these are advantages. So, it, it has to reach to every location in the foliage in the, in the canopy of the plant which we are uh, thinking of. And uh, the application rate is usually uh, actually these, uh, um, these are not meant for very high uh, application rates, but the application rate which are generally followed is 22 to 55 kg per hectare. This is the amount uh, generally we do if it has uh, it has to be given only in the powder form. It, it has to be given uh, something else then maybe this powder has to be made into a liquid and um, with water and then the solution has to be given. We depends on what we want and uh, what is the type nature of the crop, what is the type of infestation and what is the type of the chemical um, powder which is available with us because uh, many uh, aspects are to be looked into before we uh, go into application of this. Now, generally this see what will happen if this is uh, uh, applied maybe that uh, if um, uh, wind is blowing you should avoid that. But then if the wind is you are not applying at a very high level, you are applying at the say 1, 1 1.5 meter of uh, the plant height. So, up to when you find that the wind speed is low particularly say about up to 3 meter or so. So, 3 meter per second when the or moderate air temperature at that time you can apply. Generally these chemical applications are generally done in the early hours and in the late afternoons because to avoid uh, many things. For example, even if it is uh, uh, say uh, daytime and it is very hot, then those uh, the, the insects go underneath the uh, leaf and they sit there. So, if you um, wet the whole foliage also, they will not be getting effective. That is why it is done during the uh, morning hours and then the afternoon hours where the um, temperature is comfortable, they can be all over. Uh, the um, plant and so you can apply. So, that is why it says that say the air velocity or wind velocity should not be very high. Uh, there are two aspects of it. One is that uh, it will not affect it, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the insects because insects will be also all around and it will not be lost because the speed is high. If the wind is high, then even if you apply certain amount of course, it will be um, spread and the wind will take away it will take this to another location. So, wherever the, it is not to be applied it will be applied and in that case it may happen that uh, there could be uh, damage to the other plant as well. It may fall on the um, soil. So, there are various uh, um, problems which may occur because of this and that is why we would like that the, the wind velocity should not be more and a moderate air temperature we are talking of uh, not very high temperature not very low temperature also. Uh, generally, these are these equipment uh, which have been shown uh, and which has been made so far uh, with uh, are uh, generally manually operated or uh, power operated. So, you can have manually operated power operated both depending upon what you are handling as you said that may be the capacity is 22 to 55 kg per hectare. So, if it is th thus then you may not like to have a manually operated one because then that has to be carried by the man either he will carry about 15 kg and then finish and then come back and keep uh, filling up and all that or uh, you can have a equipment in which uh, power operated which which can carry that amount once and then uh, the application can be given where the powder can be spread 
wherever it is like and wherever whatever be the location whatever be the the height of the um, uh, spread to be given it can be done so uh, this is about the dusters now this sprayers well this is um, slightly different from there uh, from those um, powders because there um, uh, we have a fear that uh, with wind it will go away it's not that when you have a chemical it will not go away if the wind is high yes these chemicals will also go away but then it has some other um, requirements of this sprayer where we spray the liquid we spray the chemical which is there and now generally we don't want to spray that chemical in the raw form this has to be diluted to a certain uh, percentage of uh, dilution which is required for that particular because that that will be uh, an effective one certain active ingredients are there in each chemical and accordingly that has to be uh, multiplied uh, particularly um, the in the volume form and hence uh, several hundred liters of solution have to be prepared with uh, those chemicals now what are the ways by which these sprayers where these sprayers are used i have just listed the, them here you can have a look at this well these are herbicides uh, herbicide well so the herbicides in order to reduce competition from weeds these sprayers are used I have, we have talked of this uh, earlier already then uh, protection of um, the uh, crop from fungicides and then uh, um, uh, uh, the fungal diseases fungicides are used for fungal diseases then uh, um, control of insects and pests which is uh, of concern to us uh, in this particular lecture here and then micronutrients yes this is another important thing because sometimes as i said earlier that maybe that we would like to um, apply certain nutrients or uh, growth enhancing uh, uh, materials uh, then in that case also um, hormones we call so micronutrients are to be applied in that case also the, you can use this sprayer but then a proper volume of uh, solution has to be prepared so what are the functions of this sprayer then now you see this uh, liquid has to be applied it ha it must be applied uniformly well and then it cannot be poured simply at say um, uh, 2 liter per hour per meet uh, per uh, minute or per hour or things like that but it has to be spread in the form of small droplets we have talked of the droplets so this is important how what sort of things are done uh, what are the functions that the sprayer does sprayer uh, what does it do it breaks the liquid into droplets forms yes this is important because it has to be broken into small particles these droplets when then when they get deposited they will be effective in that so how to create that this is one challenge uh, when you design a sprayer how to create that so that uh, effective size and distribute them uniformly over the surface or the press to be protected yes so this is the main function of the sprayer which you design uh, in now it's a different thing that uh, what mechanism you apply to de um, to design and so um, such that the droplets are of a particular size and their function is to regulate the amount of in the amount of the chemical in the insecticide pesticide or fungicide that we want to apply on to that you need to apply uh, so that excessive application to avoid excessive application so this you know, this is very important so when is duster is there what we are trying to do we are trying to spread the dust dust particles in a certain uh, size form and so uniformly to the targeted places when we talk of sprayers we are talking of these uh, droplets to be created and those droplets and it must be created in exact amount so that uh, we are, we do not lose this so this is the job of a sprayer now what are the other um, uh, components of this let's have a look at it well we know that we have to try we have to uh, make the droplets we have to create droplets out of the liquid solution which we have how do we do it you must have read uh, already earlier that un you will have to have pressure you must have heard about the engine in the engine what we do when the diesel or petrol is um, thrown into the engine combustion chamber how it is thrown in fact it is atomized over there 
and uh, through high pressure, when it is pushed through atomized um, high pressure through a particular nozzle, then it comes into various um, to in the uh, in in the dust in the in the very you can say uh, a particle form, smaller particles, and that atomized particles will get uh, um, uh, connected and uh, mixed with the um, uh, with the uh, whole um, heated gas, and the actually things happen in the engine. Now, a similar thing happens here. You need to have a, um, a pressure created. So, what are the different types of um, uh, systems which are employed for uh, sprayers? We'll have a look at this. See. The hard leak energy, what sort of energy? You can say that lever operated knapsack sprayers, you must have seen the sprayer which are carried at the back and then the person um, operates with the lever, it could be a foot operated, it could be a rocker operated and uh, hand compression, tractor operated uh, boom sprayers, these are the sprayers which are there, so, this hydraulic energy sprayers. Now, then gaseous energy. Now, this is very important. Actually, some of these uh, uh, particles we would like to use the air uh, blowers, so that like a mist it comes out uh, in the. So, there also the particle size will be very small and it will go and uh, cover the whole plant. So, many a times it has been found particularly orchard ones that uh, the air carrier particularly the uh, mist blowers are the ones which are very effective. This. The second is the spinning disc uh, um, type where, where centrifugal energy is used. Well, uh, this is one even uh, similar thing can be also used for the um, uh, dusters as well. And, uh, some of them are made manual dusters are there where centrifugal energy is used and you can spray the dust. Now, you, we need to have a certain uh, pressure on that. What are the different pressures which are followed in that? for uh, crops depending upon whether it is a cereal crop or a orchard crop or a plantation crop or high trees when you have to spray. So, there you can see the volume on the basis of the you can see the application rate the, the, uh, um, uh, on the basis of power and also on the basis of the uh, pressure that we create. So, we will talk of pressure slightly later. Let us see about the application rate and the source of power. So, the source of power could be say manually operated yes manually operated one you can have where it could be a lever as I said manually operated levers, rockers, foot operated all this. Then um, uh, animal operated yes you could have a animal operated system which is of course uh, in some locations you might see, but uh, because uh, the situation is changing over uh, now. So, these are not very much uh, in vogue now, but this yes one can use the animal energy it is a question of only using the uh, source of power. So, um, the 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 high uh, volume ones are 400 liters per hectare then the low volume ones are less than 405 to 400 liters per hectare and then the ultra low volume you can have as low as uh, say 1 to 5 liters per um, hectare or so so these are on the basis of the application rate and uh, on the basis of the source of power you can say that manually animal energy and then powers whether you use a tractor power or a or a um, uh, power tiller or you can you can also think of the electrical power used yeah many of the uh, devices which are coming on the electrical power use where uh, you can electrostatic because there uh, we disc we will discuss this later but then I, uh, here i can only say that these uh, these particles actually are charged so when the um, uh, negative charge is on to the plant so they go and they get deposited so their efficiency deposition efficiency is very high and that means the effectiveness of the chemical when it is uh, put in the electrostatic uh, uh, charge particles it is very high. So, one way it is very good, but there are other uh, difficulties with this and uh, drawbacks and limitations because which uh, it is not very extensively used, but yes this is also used and uh, now it has come back well it was started long back and now it has come back people are uh, using it and several modifications of this have come up. Now, when uh, uh, when large areas particularly you might have seen in west uh, in US and other places where the uh, farms are very large and you have to apply these chemicals then aeroplanes are flown on third they, they carry the chemical and uh, maybe the height above the ground particularly from the plant you can say about 1 to 8 meters the whole uh, aircraft moves and then it will spray over the whole um, area and uh, because uh, it has an advantage from the point of view of um, the um, uh, economics is because the large areas say about uh, 50, 60, 100 hectares, 200 hectares like that 
and hence the plane can go and uh, cover the whole area in very short duration of time and there may not be losses because they can adjust the time. Now, what uh, over uh, uh, about uh, last 10 years or so, people are thinking of using small planes or small robots which are in fact uh, are called as drones. So, these drones can also do the same task uh, and uh, that is why we have written here that you can also think of the um, drone operated sprayers. The, the drone can do the task, we will discuss this in another lecture. Uh, what uh, drones can do. They can do wonders and uh, this will be useful for small farms and particularly elevated locations where the person cannot go or orchards which are there on elevations, uh, the, these drones can help us and they have been helping. So, it is uh, possible that you can think of these high technology to be used for uh, uh, use of these sprayers, drone operated sprayers or robot operated sprayers we can we can think of. So, on the basis of the, um, the classification of the sprayers we can see that it could be a manually operated, animal operated or power operated. You can think of uh, tractor or uh, power tiller or you can think of uh, motor operated electrical motors or electrical energy could be applied. Then on the basis of the volume, yes volume, larger volumes medium volumes and ultra low volumes, small volumes where uh, some of the chemicals are needed to be applied uh, in large volume only. Those active indirectly they are applied, no solution, I mean no mixing of water, those are some of them are applied sometimes. And then if you are talking of the energy type of energy used, one is the hydraulic energy where you are using uh, high, um, the hand compression sprayers and uh, maybe tractor operated system or you can think of air carriers so that you get in the form of mist. So, this is what we are talking with respect to the sprayers and dusters as a concept of understanding what they are, these are. Well, the pressures which I wanted to show you in the other one we have kept here. Now, you can see that the pressure, what are the, because uh, for creating those uh, small particles you need pressure as I said earlier. So, liver operated sprayers, um, the, um, the pressure, operating pressure is maintained about 1 to 3 kg per centimeter square and the discharge rate is normally 500 ml per uh, minute. Then stir, um, stir up pump uh, sprayers, these are also of a similar type and a, a similar uh, discharge and pressure is also required. Rocker type ones slightly higher where there the uh, discharge rate is high and uh, the pressure, the moment the discharge is high and you want to make the same type of uh, particles then there you will have to have a high pressure and now the pressure is about 14 to 18 uh, uh, atmosphere or kg per centimeter square which we say. Then foot operated sprayers could be because foot operators, um, operated sprayers are many uh, which are used for uh, even uh, big uh, orchards or uh, big trees um, uh, where about uh, 20, 30 feet uh, you want to um, push the um, chemical. So, there uh, you, the pressure is very high about 17 to 21 or even uh, 21 to 55 when you are thinking of a tractor operated sprayer because we are we are thinking of high 150 to 190 liters per minute, so much of volume. These are required particularly for um, tall trees and all that. So, various uh, methods have been um, uh, employed for all these and then what we are getting is that on the basis of this pressure, on the basis of the volume and on the basis of the energy employed and the type of um, power source, the sprayers and dusters etcetera are all classified and understood. Now, the main thing in this what I want to say you is, is that it is the droplets, whether you are talking of uh, liquid or you are talking of powder, you have to think of what is the size of the droplet or the size of dust particle um, which is powder in, in case of a powder which will go and get deposited. And uh, once it is deposited uh, appropriately at the right place and in the right uh, quantity, we will get the benefit of that. And that is why these are various types of med are available. I have shown you one of uh, the one which is uh, available here and we are trying to modify into uh, electronic one. Uh, this is one which is available mist type but then we want to see whether it is possible to use this uh, so that we can economize on the, the total chemical which is being uh, applied. 
this is important because you may have the system which is applying such that uh, the volume is too high and in fact the ones which are available in the market are like that that once you start the system and the power pressure is um, um, pressure uh, is created because of the power source then it continues until you stop it now that way it may not uh, it may be good for a continuous uh, uh, cereal crop where the tractor can go but if you are talking of orchard crops where the plants are at a certain distance then it we, it has been seen many cases that the canopy and the next canopy there is a difference and uh, that those areas if it uh, the when it when it ap applies those are waste so that's why we have to think of the power source and uh, think of this so as an engineer what is your knowledge wh what you should contribute you should try to design keeping in view the requirement of the um, uh, plant or the uh, the tree which is there or the um, orchard which is to be considered and then the power source and the total quantity to be applied and the type of the chemical or the powder to be applied. So, you need to uh, consider all these things and then this design which one will be beneficial. So, that we are all talking today about precision agriculture, we are talking of how we can minimize on the inputs and get maximized. So, for production, protection of the plants these are very important. Well, um, I have shown you um, a, a manually operated spare where all these uh, details are uh, given to you. you. You can see this that all details are explained over here. You definitely um, it will have a tank sure uh, where the chemical will be there. Then there will be a, a lever which has to be operated and there will be a plunger. Now, we will talk of what are the different types of uh, uh, components we will talk slightly later. But these are the ones which are there, the tank, the nozzle, the filter, the valves which are there, the pressure regulator, the hose pipes, the handle, spray gun and the spray lens which are there. These are all shown here. So, you, if you, mm, uh, you look into it, you will be able to understand here, not much to explain and discuss. So, that is why I have given you, mm, uh, we have taken from the literature. Remember that uh, what we are discussing here is, uh, we are talking whatever is available mm, uh, in some of the books as well as the um, research publications and some of the um, work that we have done at IIT Kharagpur and done elsewhere which are beneficial for different types of crops, um, cereal or uh, plantation or whatever. So, those are the things which we are. So, e, we, I request you that you must also go into uh, the um, literature available to have uh, sufficient and um, you can say that add up to the knowledge which um, we are trying to give you here. Let us go to the other slides. Well, some of the details of this, this hydraulic spray lens, the hydraulic spray gun. Now, what are the details? These are also very self-explanatory because we have given the dimensions, we have given the values, etc., in such a way that anyone can understand these uh, concepts and these uh, types which are available. And it also helps you because once you understand where is the nozzle disc, whether is nozzle cap, and what where is the nozzle body, and what is the barrel, and things like that, for all these trigger type and screw type then these designs help you in understanding what is the way by which we are uh, able to make the droplets of uh, different uh, sizes. This, this is very important. Now, mm, the references we have given the reference because these are things which we have taken from proper references of the codes and it is uh, mm, worth mentioning that uh, those should be uh, told to you where we have taken it from. Well, then major, comp uh, major components are power operated. We see whether it is uh, power operated or a manually operated, the components will remain more or less same except that uh, the because of the power source. So, the chemical tank definitely a tank has to be there where you will keep. Now, what will be the size of the cam tank? This will vary from uh, the, the power source to power source. Then, what is the type of um, pump? How, what should be the size of the pump, what should be the specification of the pump, then type of nozzle that we would like to say the filters, valves, pressure regulator, spray boom and the agitator. Now, some cases you will write to agitate uh, the whole chemical if it is there because sometimes the oil immersions are there which are not uh, directly they cannot be put. So, I think uh, these are the components which you require. 
So, just as in a representative, we have given you here. And then I wanted to, through this lecture, I wanted to introduce to you what is spraying and what is a dusting and what are the various types of devices which are available and where you can think about uh, what is the design portion. Design portion is the pressure to be maintained, the volume to be taken and the particle size. So, we will discuss about the different si particle size, but then you need to create particles, uh, you need to atomize, you need to create mist which will go and uh, spread onto the um, plant or the canopy and then it will um, be effective in controlling the insect fixed whatever is there. So, that is why, so this we have discussed, I, I think uh, we will discuss other things later. So, thank you for this.